It was November the 11th, 1987. In what appeared to be just another normal night in Chicago, nothing seemed weird or out of the ordinary. But little did the residents of this great city know that that night, broadcasting history was going to be made. It was just past 11 p.m. where some viewers tuned into the TV station WTTW in order to catch a classic episode of Doctor Who. After all, who wouldn't want to watch Tom Baker say, Would you like a jelly baby? However, viewers were in for a disturbing shock, as they were going to see something way scarier than any Doctor Who monster covered in bubble wrap, as their TV viewing was hijacked, where viewers were greeted with this creepy image of someone wearing a Max Hedrum mask, spouting out all kinds of incoherent nonsense. Yep, the TV signal had been hijacked by a broadcasting pirate, with the incident lasting a whole 90 seconds, till the signal ended and viewers could get back to watching Doctor Who. Some viewers were disturbed, some thought it was funny, and others found it to be intriguing. But either way, a legend was born. To this day, the Max Hedrum hijack is one of the most mysterious and talked about unsolved mysteries in the history of television. Who was this person? Where did they come from? And why did they do it? Well, in today's episode of Weird Tales of Pop Culture, we're going to take a look into the strange enigma that is the Max Hedrum Broadcast Hijack. Let's check it out. So I guess we better start from the beginning and ask ourselves, just who was Max Hedrum? Max Hedrum was a fictional TV personality. His gimmick was that he was the first computer-generated TV personality, despite the fact that he was played by an actor wearing prosthetic makeup to look computer-generated. The actor was actually Matt Frewer, as in that guy who played Big Russ in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, and Trash Can Man from the original Stand miniseries. The character was known for his obscure and glitchy way of talking and for his humorous wit. This is Max Hedrum. Max Hedrum made his first appearance in 1985 in the made-for-TV British movie Max Hedrum, 20 Minutes into the Future. Hedrum was so embraced by the public, a TV series followed, where he would act as a talk show host and music video presenter, and would often interrupt the videos with his humorous and mischievous antics. Max Hedrum even made his big shift across the pond to the US, where he would get his own show on ABC in 1987, and he was just as embraced by the American public as he was the UK ones, where he even became a spokesman for Coca-Cola, in an attempt to thwart its competitors Pepsi. More people prefer the new refreshing taste of Coke over Pepsi. Sweating? It's true. After all, Coke needed all the help it could get, as Pepsi had Michael Jackson. So naturally, Coke got Max Hedrum, and of course, to top it off, there was Max Hedrum merchandise, including this rubber mask, which, yeah, the mask alone looks pretty creepy. I mean, you wouldn't want your partner to be wearing this while you guys were doing the spicy tango. So we know who Max Hedrum is, and we know that there was Max Hedrum masks. This leads us to... There are actually two broadcast hijack incidents that took place on the night of November the 22nd. The first was at 9pm on the TV station WGN-TV during news coverage of a football game. Everything seemed normal until the signal was briefly hijacked, where confused viewers at home were greeted with our Max Hedrum mask-wearing pirate, who was just bobbing his head and just swaying. There was no word spoken. Just weird screeching buzzing noises in the background, which oddly made it feel even more disturbing. This signal hijack only lasted for 25 seconds, until WGN were able to get their signal back, 
where we return to a rather confused news anchor who had no idea of what just happened. Oh, if you're wondering what's happened. <laughs> So am I. I love it how this presenter put it down to the computer that's running the program having a malfunction. Actually, the computer that we have running our news from time to time took off and went wild. Yeah, that's right. Just blame the computer. So that would have appeared to have been the end of it. But our signal hijacker had one more trick up his sleeve. As the second incident took place two hours later on WTTW, where viewers were watching the classic Doctor Who story, The Horror of Fang Rock where suddenly halfway through, the program was hijacked. Once again by the Max Hedrum mask wearing intruder. Because it's, it's <laughs> this time the hijack lasted 90 seconds, with the hijacker now talking, and hearing him talk is just as disturbing as the rest of the presentation. He makes references to the real Max Hedrum's endorsements of Coke by flicking a Pepsi can and while making other comments that don't seem to make sense. Like saying, your love is fading. As well as talking about his quote, giant masterpiece for all the greatest world newspaper nerds. It's often hard to hear what exactly he's saying because of the rough audio quality. But I'm pretty sure at one stage he even talks about his piles. <laughs> the disturbing footage ends with the Max Hedrum pirate dropping his pants revealing his behind, where someone dressed up in what looks like a medieval dress or some kind of maid's outfit spanks him with a fly swatter. Obviously I can't show that. So of course the signal ended and creeped out viewers got back to watching Doctor Who, but they were probably too confused as to what on earth just happened to be able to enjoy the rest of the show. But let's just look closely at some of the antics the intruder did and what they meant. Well, at one stage he hums a tune. This tune was actually the theme song to an animated series called Clutch Cargo. The intruder further says, I still see the X. I still see the X. Which is a reference to the last episode of that show. The Big X. Which kind of gives us an insight that the signal hacker was a fan of Clutch Cargo, and not someone who just randomly heard the theme tune at some stage. He also made a comment about someone called Chuck Swirsky. <laughs> Chuck Swirsky. <laughs> Chuck Swirsky was a sportscaster for WGN, the previous channel the signal pirate had hijacked. This made some people speculate that this was some kind of personal attack on the channel or TV broadcasting in general. We then get the Pepsi can where he says, catch the wave. Catch the wave. <laughs> this, as mentioned, is a reference to the real Max Hedrum's Coke adverts. Catching the wave. Catch it if you can, can. Catch the wave. And I guess the gag was, he was using a Pepsi can. So what does all this mean? What's the connection between Max Hedrum, a news broadcaster, Clutch Cargo, Pepsi, and a fly swatter? I don't get it. Well, that's the thing. The whole ordeal is so bizarre and intriguing. Even to this day, people are trying to figure out and discover what on earth it all meant. And more importantly, why? Naturally, this was big news at the time. All the news shows were reporting on this, declaring this incident to be a new age of piracy. It's believed the hijacker was someone close to the TV broadcast signals in Chicago, and with their own signal, were able to jam WGN and WTTW signals, and briefly take over their broadcast frequency. So whoever this was had some tech on them. I love the news segments where they talk to members of the public about the ordeal. Some of their reactions are priceless, like this guy who likened the incident to having a brick thrown through his window. Uh, somebody wants to get attention, what do they do? They go break into a uh, television broadcast just to get attention, like throwing a brick through your window, so to speak. And this young lady who was recording the said episode of Doctor Who, who was so upset and so distraught, she was going to have to do the unthinkable and record over the tape. But that in the middle of the tape, it's going to be... We're going to have to tape over it. However, this kid found the whole ordeal to be rather funny, all things considering. Naturally, the authorities and TV stations were pissed. Even the FCC said that it was going to do investigations and that those responsible will be found and face criminal charges, of which included one year in jail. 
In a twist of irony, one of the news segments that was reporting on this ordeal ended with an advertisement of three men and a baby, which was the subject of the previous Weird Tales episode, which was about the ghostly cardboard cutout scene in that movie. But the Max Hedrum hijacker was never found. To this day, we don't know who this was and why they did it. No one has ever claimed responsibility, which makes the incident even more mysterious and captivating, and generates even more discussion and speculation. With rumours and theories coming out of the woodwork all over the place, there are many claims, some of which do seem legit, like there are claims that it was more than one person. I mean, that would have had to have been the case, hence the person in the maid's outfit, and that it was possibly a group of people, of at least three, maybe more. There are even theories that this was the work of an underground hacking community in Chicago at the time, as well as the hacker being a disgruntled ex-employee of one of the TV stations, to it even being college students and activists, or even just young kids having a laugh, you know, just doing it as a joke because they can. But to me, all the evidence of what is going on is presented in the hijack itself. This person is a Max Hedrum fan. He wore the mask, had a revolving metallic background designed to look like the background of the real Max Hedrum show, and he even makes references to Max Hedrum's Coke advertisements. So this wasn't someone who just randomly got a Max Hedrum mask and thought, oh yeah, that'll do for this hijack. This was someone who knew Max Hedrum very well and had been following him and tried to comically recreate him. After all, the character of Max Hedrum himself was someone who would interrupt TV viewing with his mischievous antics and commentaries. That was one of the character's main gimmicks. And so maybe that's all there is to it. Maybe the meaning of this is that there is no meaning. Maybe we've been digging around the internet trying to find the true rationale behind the incident, when in actual fact, maybe, just maybe, it's someone who was a Max Hedrum fanboy, and for a split moment in time, wanted to do what Max does. Be the character, so to speak. The incidents in total may have only lasted mere minutes, but its effects seem to have lasted forever. As for as long as there's TV, there will always be the strange and surreal moment of the Max Hedrum Broadcasting Hacker. Either way, we may never know the true facts about the incident. Not until someone comes forward with an explanation. But, you know what? I kinda like that. Part of the excitement and intrigue of the chase is the mystery, and sometimes looking for the reasons is more exciting than actually figuring them out. The journey of discovery, to me, is always more exciting than being given the answers. Anyway, I'm Minty, and the Max Hedrum Broadcast Hijack is a weird tale of pop culture.